we'll go with the fat executors so we learned in our previous session how we have to arrive number of executors number of cores and the memory which is required for our executor all these things we we discussed right with the continuation of the topic we are going to cover three more topics fat thin and optimally sized executors let's move and start fat or thick executors what does it mean i will come to that point considered 15 cores in one executor i will come to this point little later let's move on let's take a we have a three node cluster if we have a three node cluster i just assumed 16 cpu cores and 64 gb ram this configuration is same for three nodes in the cluster i just taken this example to demonstrate you in uh, in real time you may see more also more or less fine now everybody knows that these are the machines which runs on some OS, right? For that OS, definitely some configuration is required to maintain the machines. Here you can assume one core, one GB is for OS. I'm leaving this one core, one GB for operating system maintenance. Okay. So these configuration will be used for only operating system. So minus this one core, one GB from the actual capacity of that machine. If I ignore one core, one GB, then 15 core 63 GB is my a net available resources inside the machine, right? The same thing or for other nodes also. Till here, topic is common for fat, thin and optimally sized executors. From here, topic will change. Okay. What are the next calculations, right? So here fat means very simple. Fat means I will assume one executor for one machine or for one node. Here, what is the node configuration? 15 cores, 63 GB is my node capacity. That means I assume only one executor. If I assume only one executor for 15 cores, generally we will call it as a fat executors. Let's move and see the calculation. Total executor per node, only one. I'm assuming only one. If you see the headline, I consider 15 cores in one executor, which means 15 cores are here, each node having only one executor, right? Now, memory per executor is equal to 63 GB only, right? Because entire 63 GB is assigned to one executor, okay? Now, we learned how to calculate the memory overhead, right? Memory overhead is 384 MB or 10% of executor memory. Whichever is higher, right? So 10% of 63 GB is 6 GB approximately. This is a maximum when we compare to 384 MB. So that is why I taken memory overhead as 6, 6 GB. So what is this? If you, if you notice, this is executor overhead memory. In Apache Spark, executor, memory, executor overhead memory refers to the additional memory allocated for purposes beyond the standard competition and storage data. We already discussed, if on heap memory is not sufficient, Spark will utilize off heap memory to do some competitions to store some data, right? And memory used for intermediate processing and the data buffering during shuffles or other operations. So this overhead memory will be used for this kind of applications or processes. General JVM overhead such as garbage collection under other JVM internal process. The default value for Spark executor overhead memory is typically set to 10% of executor memory with a minimum of 384 MB, but it can be adjusted based on the specific needs and the workloads characteristics of the, your application. So the same thing that just now I explained, generally we will calculate 10% of the executor memory, which is minimum 384 and maximum as per the executor memory of 10%. That is why we taken 6 GB. Okay. Now, now we will get what exactly is the executor memory, right? Actual memory minus the allocated overhead memory will give you memory for executor. Okay. 
Is this clear? Yes, sir. Great. Okay. If you are able to understand here till here and it is very easy, let's move. See, indirectly what I'm saying is entire this 15 core and 57 GB. What is 57 GB? This is a this is a executor memory. Okay. Uh, you can say unheap memory. And what is the half heap memory in this case? 6 GB. That is why we mentioned 15 core, 57 GB RAM. This is so entire configuration is one executor. Okay. Like that, we have how many? Three nodes, right? Which means we have total three executors. Okay. Now, if you ask me one question, let's say one node is equal to 15 core cores that is equal to one, one executor. This we are aware. Okay. Then total, can you please tell me how many executors here? Anyone? Total how many executors? Three. Yes. Total executors is equal to, here we have a three nodes. Each node is having one executor. That is three executors. So this is one answer. Right? Next. Memory for each executor is 57 GB. Correct? We already discussed each executor memory is 57 GB. Okay. Now, anyone tell me one executor is having how many cores? Oh, no. One executor is having how many cores? 15. 15 cores. Yes. Here I mentioned uh, 15 cores in one executor. Okay. In this case, since we are allocating every core, whatever available core inside the machine to executor, because I want only one executor inside the machine. That is why number of cores per executor is equal to number of cores which are available inside the node. Okay. Now, if this is the case, while we are submitting our Spark application, what could be the, our configuration? This is our configuration. When we write a Spark submit, of course, we will give master as a yawn or Kubernetes. Then deployment mode is cluster. Then these three are very important because we are focusing on these three first. Number of executors are three. Executor cores are 15. Executor memory is 50, 57 GB. Okay. Okay. Till now, are you able to understand? Yes. Okay. Hi, Anilish. Please, go ahead. So one question like, the total executor per node equal to 15 by 15 equal to 1, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, can you just let me know like what we are doing here? Total executor per node and memory per executor. Let's say this is a house. This is a house. Executor, mm -hmm. I'm saying only one person is there and there are six bananas. Then you can allocate six bananas to one person. Mm, correct. Okay. And one more thing. Let us say if there are two, two persons are there. How many hmm. you can equally distribute? Three for each. Yes. If there are six persons, then how many you can able to allocate? One for each. Great. Okay. Here, allocating six bananas to one person is called fat executor. Allocating six bananas to six members or six persons is called thin executors. We will see that shortly. But as of now, are you able to follow? Yes, yes. I'm not completed it. We have to discuss pros and cons when we choose fat or thick executors. Okay, let's move. Let's concentrate on pros of fat executors. Reduced overhead because less executors means overhead in managing and scheduling tasks, right? Because if you have only three executors, so it is very easy, right? Like even uh, to maintain the cluster is easy for resource manager. Effective for large tasks can handle large memory intensive and CPU intensive task efficiently, which means these are useful. Fat executors are useful when your data is huge. If you feel that there is a lot of shuffling, which happens inside the data based on the program that you are going to return. And if your partition size is huge. If you don't want to make too much 
network consumption or network traffic no in that case you can go with thick executors simplified configuration easier to manage and configure few large executors compared to many small ones as i told right maintenance is very easy improved performance for some workloads not all for some beneficial for workloads that requires substantial resources and minimal shuffling as i said if you have only one executor per node so data locality will will give you more advantage right because you no need to get the data from different different executors or different different machines right because all executors 15 executors are inside a single machine so there is very less chance of bringing a data into one machine to another machine right so and the shuffling will be reduced in this case okay like like we have a pros definitely there could be cons right let's see risk of unused resources which means let us assume my partition size is too low if my partition size is 128 mb but my per core memory is let's say 4 gb you are wasting the extra memory right because to process 128 mb of data i may need maximum 1 gb or 500 mb example but you are wasting 3 3 gb plus right that means there is a chance of unused resources and once you block let us assume i just now answered to one of our friend that there are six bananas and only one person what if that guy eat only one banana what if that guy eat only two bananas you are wasting rest of the bananas right three bananas or four bananas right that is waste of food same here if you allocate one executor which is having 15 cores but if you are able to utilize only five cores you are wasting rest of the 10 cores because the 10 cores won't be av available for another application because you are blocking that executor directly so there is a high possible to re to unuse the allocated cores and memory impact of failures okay what if during execution if that executor goes down the entire 15 cores of a data whatever other are processing will be lost right very difficult to recover the failures in failure case right scalability issue as i said scalability because we have a very less number of executors and scalability is also a bottleneck increased io you know right if 15 cores are inside then when you are writing something reading something then there could be io right input and output operations so since data is huge definitely you may have to face this situation where larger executor handling big partitions may lead to increased network and disk io potentially causing bottlenecks so these are the advantages and disadvantages of fat executors guys you no need to learn more than this as a developer believe me if you are able to to learn this much i think you are good even clearing in interviews or working in your projects